what it is that Christ has done for us and what it is that we have done to Christ. And uh, we're going to read about the crucifixion and the trials and what Christ suffered for us. And I want you to think about personally what it is that you have done to Christ. What it is that, how it is that you have hurt him. How it is that you have treated Christ badly. How it is that he's been faithful to you and we have been unfaithful to him. And uh, it's going to be a bit of a serious time. And, uh, and I hope that you'll join me as we talk about what a Savior we have. What a man of sorrows. He has borne our griefs for us. Alright, so I'm going to play a little bit of music softly here. And we're going to do some, uh, some scripture reading about what it is that Christ has done. We're going to read from, well first before we begin reading, let's think about, you know, the, the plan that God put in place for mankind. He created a perfect world, perfect garden, a perfect man, a perfect woman, Adam and Eve with no sin, did not make them work hard, no thorns, no pain, no sickness, no death. And then God gave a companionship, He gave everything under Adam and Eve's dominion. They had it all. They had the whole world. It belonged to them. And God says, take care of it. And just in a, a perfect environment. What an amazing God that he would do that for Adam and Eve, for us, for mankind. And think of the betrayal. Think of the treachery and the treason. That Adam and Eve would do something so terrible, something so wrong, that they would turn their back on God and sin against Him. God, their Creator, the one that loved them, gave them everything they could be, could possibly imagine were given to them. And that they would turn and sin against this great God. And then, of course, we know that God promised them that even though the serpent would bruise his heel, that he would come and crush the head of that serpent. Crush a mortal wound upon Satan. Upon the snake that had uh, deceived Eve and caused Adam and Eve and plunged mankind into sin. Think of what a, a fair God would have done. A fair God, a God who gives us what's fair, would have sent Adam and Eve and all of us to hell to burn and the lake of fire forever and ever with no hope, with no chance. Why? Because we blew it in the Garden of Eden. Because that's what we deserve. God says, I won't give you what you deserve. I will not give you what is fair. I will give you what I, out of an abundance of my love. And so he promised that woman Eve and he promised that man Adam that there would become, there would come a seed, a seed out of the woman that would lead them back to paradise. And of course, we know that man is Jesus Christ. And so, we can find that God is, God is good, and that God is love, and that God is merciful and gracious. And so for thousands of years of time, though man turned their backs on God completely, it says, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, Genesis 6, 8. And God promised this, Jesus Christ the seed of the woman to Eve and to Adam in the Garden of Eden. He accepted the sacrifice of Abel and he he chose, he elected Abraham to bear a chosen people from which could be born the Savior. And finally at last the day came about 2,000 years ago in a little town of Bethlehem where the angels sang and they shone brightly in the night sky and said glory to God in the highest. Why? Because he was here. The promised one, the Messiah, the Savior, was born at last. One who could lead us into the kingdom with no tears, into eternity, into rest, with no more sorrow or pain or death. Well, then 33 years later, mankind made another decision. If they would choose God to receive His Son, Jesus Christ, or to reject. That's where we will begin our reading in Luke chapter 22, verse 39 
You don't need to follow along if you want. You can just listen because I'm going to skip around between the Gospels. And we know that Jesus Christ came. He offered the kingdom. He says, here I am. I'm your Savior. You know, receive me today. Let's start the kingdom. And we can see the end of pain. And we can see the end of death. And we can see the end of suffering and sorrow. No more heartache. No more tears. Let me wipe them away. It says in Luke chapter 22, verse 39. It says, And he came out and went as he went to the Mount of Olives. And his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray ye that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about his stones cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling to the ground. Here we see that Christ knew what would happen. He knew that he would be betrayed by his own disciple Judas. He knew that he would be rejected and despised of men. They would call for his crucifixion, his death. And it says, when he realized that he would, as he thought about bearing our sin upon himself, and it says that he was in agony. And he sweat so much that it was like great drops of blood. Now he did not sweat blood, but the sweat was like in physician Luke, the physician, Dr. Luke's mind and his experience, it was like drops of blood. In other words, he sweat a lot. He would say in English, he sweat profusely. Why? Because he was in agony. Why? Because he was to bear our sin upon a tree. Well, Mark 14, 53 continues. It says, And they led Jesus away to the high priest, and with him were assembled all the chief priests and elders, and the scribes. And now before that, it says how Judas had betrayed him with a kiss. It says, And then they led Jesus, in Mark 14, 53, And they led Jesus away to the high priest after his betrayal, his agony, then betrayal. And with him were assembled the chief priests and the elders and the scribes. These are the ones who were the experts, who were the ones that were most earnestly and adamantly looking for the Messiah, the chief priest, the scribes, the one who were to have their eyes open and say, we will lead you in looking for the Messiah. And now here he is. He stands before them in bodily form at 33 years of age. It says, he stood before them, the elders and the scribes. And Peter followed him afar off, even into the palace of the high priest. And he sat with the servants and warmed himself at the fire. And the chief priests and all the council sought for witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none, for many bear false witness against him, but their witness agreed not together. And there arose certain and bear false witness against him, saying, We have heard him, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. So after being in agony in the garden, sweating and then being betrayed by Judas he stood before the chief priests and the rabbis and they had hired liars to say lies against him and the high priest stood in the midst and asked Jesus saying answerest thou nothing what is it with which these witness against thee but he held his peace and answered nothing again the high priest asked him and said unto him art thou the Christ the son of the blessed And Jesus said, I am. And ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest rent his clothes and saith, What need we? Any further witnesses? Ye have heard the blasphemy. Just think about that. Here Jesus Christ, he created this world perfect with no sin. Adam and Eve, they turned against him. He received and promised them the seed of the woman, a savior. He received the sacrifice 
of evil. And what happened? Evil continuously upon the earth. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then what happened? They wanted to build with Nimrod the Tower of Babel to reach unto heaven in spite and rebellion against God. Confused their language. And he delivered them, gave to them a, a, a chosen people from Abraham. And what did they do? Moses goes up upon the Mount Sinai and they said to the golden calf, these be thy gods. Again and again we see that mankind has turned their back after every opportunity and opportunity again and again. Now here comes Christ in person after they have sawn in half and killed by stones and sword his prophets. Even his forerunner John the Baptist was beheaded. And now here comes Jesus in person. And they stand before him. Who art thou? He says, I am he, Christ. And they said, blasphemy. At this point, you would think any kind of humanity, God would just destroy this whole entire creation. It says, and some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to buffet him and to say unto him, Prophesy! And the servants did strike him with the palms of their hands. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there come one of the maids of the high priest and when she saw him Peter warming himself she looked upon him and said and thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth but he denied saying I know not neither understand I what thou sayest and he went out into the porch and the cock crew and the maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by this is one of them and he denied it again and a little after they spoke that stood by said again to Peter, Surely, surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. And he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crowed twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. So here we see that Jesus was falsely accused by liars. They accused him of blasphemy. They spit on him. They covered his face. They buffeted him. They smote him. They punched him. They mocked him saying, Prophesy, who punched you? And they hit him with the palms of their hands. And then we see, a, we see the denial of Peter. The betrayal of Judas. Now I'll read from Matthew chapter 27, verse 2. It says, And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. <clears throat> then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is not lawful for to put them into the treasury because it is the price of blood. And they took counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers therein. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value and gave them for the potter's field as the Lord appointed me. So we see that Judas betrayed him, they spat on him, they beat him, they mocked him, they cursed him. It says then Judas who had betrayed him and Peter who had denied him, then Judas went out and hanged himself. It said Jesus had given his all for Peter and given his all for Judas and what happened? Judas killed himself. Today Judas burns in hell. What about Peter? Peter denied Jesus Christ three times. Now I'll read from 
John chapter 18, verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the, judge, the hall of judgment, and it was early, and they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a male factor, we would not have delivered him unto thee. They said, He's a criminal, or we won't waste your time. Just think about that. The people that God had chosen turned around and delivered him to Pilate, the Roman, and said, He's a criminal. Then said Pilate unto him, them, Take him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So Pilate said, Go ahead, judge him, do what you want to do with him. They said, Oh, what we want to do with him is for him to die. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, saying, Thou, saying, Thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? So we see that Jesus was not just denied and betrayed by his own disciple Judas and denied by his own disciple Peter. He was denied by his own people. Even the chief priests and scribes turned him into Pilate and said, He is a criminal. Now I'll read from Luke chapter 23, verse 18. It says, And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas, who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake to them again, spake again to them, but they said, but they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, why, what evil hath he done? I find no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and the voice of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison whom they had desired but he delivered Jesus to their will. And as they led him away, they led him, laid hold upon one Simon, a Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid the cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. So Pilate whips him, tears open his back with whips, they cursed him, and then they had him carry his own cross. He was so beat up, he did not even have the strength to carry his cross. So they had to get someone, Simon, a Cyrenian to carry it for him. And there followed him a great company of people and of women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus turning unto them said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming, and the which they shall say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bear, and the paps which never gave suck. Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, Fall in us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do these things in a green tree, what shall be done in the dry? And there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. So here Jesus was spat upon, beaten, mocked, betrayed, denied, crucified, between criminals, and even in his crucifixion, the soldiers around him mocked him. Now read John chapter 19, verse 1. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him, that's whipped him, and the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it upon his head 
and they put on him a purple robe and said, Hail, King of the Jews, and they smote him with their hands. Just picture that. Just think that. Just imagine that this is God incarnate, God come in the flesh. And think of the pain and the suffering and the agony that he's already gone through. For us, for you, for me, because of your sin, because of mine. Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. When the chief priests therefore and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again unto the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have the power to crucify, and the power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou to have no power at all against Except it were given thee from above, therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from hence, thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh him a king speaketh against Caesar. <clears throat> then Pilate therefore heard that saying, and he brought Jesus forth, and sat down in the judgment seat, in a place that is called the pavement. But in the Hebrew... Gabbatha, and it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, that's 9 a.m., and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called, in the Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and two other with him, on either side one, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many other Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priest of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from the top throughout. They said, Therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, whose it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, wife Mary, the wife of Cleophas, and Mary Magdalene. And when there, Jesus therefore saw his mother and the, the disciple standing by, whom he loved, that's John, the beloved disciple, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished! And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. And that is the story of mankind, of humanity. That's my story. That is your story. How we have crucified our Savior, our Christ, and what did he do for us? He loved us. What did he do for us? He died for us. He was beaten for us. He saved mankind from the flood for us. He accepted the awful, uh, the offering of Abel. He promised Eve and Adam the seed of the woman. Then he came and gave us 
the Jews, the chosen people. And then he gave us his prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and then his forerunner, John the Baptist. And what did we as a human beings, what did we as a people do? But we rejected them all and killed them and persecuted them until God himself came, incarnate in the flesh. And what did we do? Denied him, betrayed him, spat upon him, punched him, mocked him, stripped him naked, plucked from his face his beard, put a crown of thorns upon his head, called him a criminal, criminal, said crucify him, said he's worthy of death, called him a blasphemer, hired liars against him, declared him guilty when he was innocent, falsely accused him, and then crucified him. And there he suffered. And from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, darkness covered the hill. And I believe he suffered the pains of hell upon that cross because of you and because of me. These things Jesus did for us. These things he did because he loved us. Not because it's fair. Not because he's giving us what, I des what he deserved or what we deserved. He did this out of his love. It wasn't fair. It's not right. But God did it anyway. He says, because I'm willing, because I love you. I love the people. I will suffer for them. I will die for them. For them I will bleed. Finally, I will close with this. Isaiah chapter 53. It's called a Messianic chapter. It says, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Talking about Jesus. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And we, when, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Jesus was not a good looking handsome guy. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did not esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we were healed. All we like a sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He has brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so opened he not his mouth. For he was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit, in his mouth. Yet it pre pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul. He shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. And that includes you, my friend. That includes me. I've been justified. For he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. transgressors and he bare the sin of many. And he made intercession for the transgressors. That was for you, my friend. That was for me. He was bruised. He was wounded. He's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. What does Christ know? Loneliness, sorrow, grief, and death. Why? For you, he was bruised. For me, he was transgressed. And it pleased his father to see him wounded. It's a hard thing to read. It's a hard thing to understand and to comprehend. That it was because of me and because of my sin 
that this happened to Christ. Now I want to read to you one of the last verses in the Bible. The last book of the Bible. Revelation. The last chapter in the Bible. Chapter 22. And one of the last verses of the Bible. The last, the fifth to the last verse in the whole Bible. Summing up the whole entire Bible. It says, I, Jesus, think of what we've done to Jesus. Think of what Jesus has done by the time completing of the Bible he says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you. These things in the churches, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. What is he going to say? The bright and morning star, the root of David. What is he going to say? What have we done to him? Wounded him, hurt him, crucified him, whipped him, whipped him spat upon him, mocked him, swore at him, killed him. Bruised him and hurt him. And what does he say when he finishes the Bible? Now the fourth to the last verse. Fifth to the last verse of the Bible. Revelation 22 verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say come. And let him that hear it say come. And let him that athirst come. And whosoever will let him take of the water of life freely. After all that we've done to Christ, He says to you and to me, Come. 